I'm Helen King. I'm the Professor of the History of Classical Medicine here at Reading. At the moment I'm working on a project with Klaus Sittel and Manfred Horstmannshoff to edit a series of papers on early modern physiology. We came to this topic because there's a lot of work at the moment on the history of anatomy, particularly using the images of Vesalius in the 16th century and arguing that there's a big shift when human dissection comes into play in terms of how the body is understood. What we're trying to do is to shift that debate over to physiology. There's been an argument that the body becomes a body of organs once human dissection is practiced and that that replaces a body of fluids. But we think that the body of fluids continues through the Renaissance into the early modern period. So our collection is talking about how different uh, approaches to the body have a much greater continuity than has previously been understood. In particular, we're really interested in analogies, not just analogies between the processes of the body and the outside world, but also analogies between fluids. So to what extent is blood seen as being a version of milk? In what sense is sweat seen as a version of urine? How do the bodily fluids connect to each other in the early modern body? To do this, we're trying to look at the ancient models of the body, where analogies with meteorological processes, with volcanoes, are often used to describe what's happening inside the body. And we're seeing how those are carried through into the age when the books that have been the previous uh, origin for medicine, so books by people like Galen and Hippocrates, are replaced by looking at the body itself, particularly with new processes like microscopy, which enable the body to be understood very differently. What we're showing is that although there is change, there's also some quite unusual continuities that we hadn't expected to find in how the body is seen over this period. <laughs> 